Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you um, what's known as blind MySQL injection, which is a little bit different than the regular MySQL injection. It's a little bit simpler, but it takes a lot longer to recover information that you want. So we're going to go ahead and find, a way to find um, websites is just to do this .php, just do the in URL .php, and this will find usually find websites that use MySQL databases, but it doesn't necessarily mean that's vulnerable. And you can do something like articles.php or news.php. And I was able to find one d doing a little bit of searching, so let's just go ahead and use that one. Uh, churchcentral.com article. I mean, it looks pretty good. Just a simple article, and we're just going to test it. I already tested if it's um, vulnerable to regular MySQL and unfortunately after testing a little while it isn't but um, it is vulnerable to um, blind MySQL and what we're basically gonna do is <coughs> we're gonna test if it's vulnerable so we're just gonna do a simple uh, true statement and one equals one notice that the page loads correctly and what we're gonna be looking for is if the page loads incorrectly so we're just gonna do and one equals two which is a false statement notice that a lot of the stuff is missing so uh, we know that this site is vulnerable to uh, um, blind SQL injection now we're gonna go ahead and get the uh, version number so oops go ahead and get that and we're gonna do a substring and then just get the version and if the page loads correctly we'll know that the version equals four and let's go ahead and do that so the page in d did not load so it's not four so let's go ahead and try five page loaded so we know that the MySQL version is five and now we're going to test if uh, we can use subselect and basically if select doesn't work then we can't use subselect and we can't get the data we want so subselect is going to work so now we're going to see if we have access to the uh, MySQL user and it looks like the page did not load so unfortunately we don't have access to the MySQL user so we can't really pull passwords using the load file function or anything like that but we can manually recover passwords one character at a time which does take a, a long while but it does work so in order to do that we have to figure out if we have uh, we have to figure out the tables, uh, the table and column names. So we're going to see if there's a table named users. And usually this is the first one you try and usually the one that works. And in this case it did work. So there is a table named users. And if it loads false, if there's content missing, then you can just try like user, uh, website user, all those other names that uh, it could possibly be. And then now we're going to see if there's a column in users called password. So select uh, substring password from users and if the page loads normally we know that the column name is password and if it loads false then you're just gonna have to try something else and it loads correctly so we know that there's a password and in this case um, when you sign in uh, to this site you need your email too there isn't really a username that's used on other sections of the site but not the main site so we have to figure out if there's an email we do have access to the email so we can recover both the email and the password to log in to this website now we're going to go ahead and start pulling data from the database this is where uh, there's a lot of guessing and it takes a long time to really get what you want but eventually you'll get it so we're basically going to do a true false statement and if the page uh, we're just going to be checking um, the first character from the first user in the table users and this will return the first character one character in length and it, it will convert it into an ASCII value uh, which we can uh, compare with this symbol greater than and then just a number so um, if the uh, character from the password is greater than 90 then it will load true if it's not then it will load false so we're just trying to find where it turns false so we notice it loads true so 90 was Z capital Z and let's go ahead and try 96 96 loads true let's try 97 see 97 loads false so we know that the first 
character in the password is whatever the ASCII value of 97 is, which is lowercase a. So now let's go ahead and check the second character. So it changes to the 2. Go ahead and press enter. So it's greater than 97. Let's try 98. Oh, looks like it didn't load. So the next character in the, the password is 98, which is B. And you can also change this to get um, it for different users by changing this number here. And you can do the different uh, characters of the password. And I'm not really going to uh, do the rest for you. You can do them yourself. Uh, I've already contacted the website about the MySQL, so it might not be able to be exported very much anymore. Um, hopefully they fix it, because I really don't want any harm to come to their website. But uh, let's go ahead and we can do the same thing for uh, email. Just replace password with email. Go ahead and change this back to 1. And so it's greater than 98. Let's just keep trying numbers. 110. All right, so we got 110 and it didn't load. So we have to try a number lower than that. So let's try 100. 100 didn't load. So we basically, what we're basically trying to do is find the first number where it uh, loads incorrectly because that is the character. 105, 104. 103. So this is where a lot of guessing takes part. Okay, so we see 102 loads, but 103 does not load. So that we know the first character in the email is 103, which is G. And you can just do that to find the entire email and password. You just replace this. You just replace this number with a character, this with the user you want to select, and then just do the greater than thing. We can also do it for username to find the usernames. And let's see, I think I've already figured this one out. Yep. Buns at networkalliance.com. I've already figured out his password. Well, there's his email. Um, so you don't really have to figure that one out and log in. Uh, welcome, Gwen. Just to prove that it uh, did work. Um, if you want to learn anything else or would like to see another video tutorial for me, just uh, subscribe to my videos, leave a comment, or head over to my uh, former website. They're in the description of this video. Uh, this is Quackware signing out.